Hello everyone. Let's do some physics on a nice bright Saturday morning. Um, I, I found this nice uh, problem from this uh, popular textbook written by Young and Friedman called University Physics. And I thought we'll uh, discuss about it in this um, session here. So it's problem 23.79 and what it reads is electric charge is distributed along uniformly along a thin rod of length A with total charge Q. Find the potential at P and there's a B section. Uh, we'll come to that later. So what we have to find is there is a uniformly charged rod with a total charge of Q. Okay, so total charge is Q. Let's set the question up first and then we can uh, approach solving it. So they're saying the length of the rod is A units. And they're saying P is at a distance of probably X from the end of the rod. Okay. And we have to find the potential at P due to this rod uh, whose length is A. Okay. First of all, coming to the solution is not a big deal. We can come to it uh, anyway. But what is important is we understand how to approach the solution of the problem. All right. So suppose, just suppose, at this point right here. Okay, let me draw it with a red color for it to show really distinct. Okay. Suppose there is a point right here and it's itself has a charge total of Q. Please don't mind me, I have a little cold today. Um, so if there was a point charge Q out here, right, and you were asked to find the potential at P due to Q, right, let's, let's say the point is also called Q, how would you do it? V, at suppose we call it VP for the potential at P, is K times the charge over the distance between them, right? Instead of, we generally take R as the distance, but here, since it's X, we're going to take X, okay? So it's K times Q over X is the potential at P, right? This is a starting point for us because all this rod is, is millions and billions of point charges, probably, okay? But w what it gives you a clue as to what to do is that we need to break this rod up into small pieces and then look at their effect on P and using our beautiful integration just integrate the effect of all those small pieces of the rod to come to the total effect on P okay so having said that let's let's slice, slice this rod up into smaller parts and say I consider a part right here a slice whose width is dx okay uh, and the distance of this slice from the reference axis here is let's say x prime and let's call this x a dx prime as well because dx would be confusing with x so let's call it dx prime, okay? All right. If the entire, uh, and, and let's forget this part right here. Uh, there's no charge here, okay? So just forget it. The entire rod has a uh, charge of Q. So what we can do is this slice dx right here, dx prime, is going to have a part of the charge, right? Not the entire charge. Now, how to find how much charge it has, right? It, 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 when you're doing integration or anything like that, when you when you break up something into infinitesimal small points, say dx prime as we've done here, you can break up q into infinitesimal charges by saying d. Ooh, ooh, I had the black thing. All right, we can say. Um, dx, whoa, what happened? Um, all right, dx 
prime corresponds to dq, okay? Now we have to figure out how much this charge is. All right, to give you an analogy, let's look at a stack of cookies here. There are lots of cookies inside, and the height of that is, say, a meter, one meter. Okay, and you have to find how many cookies are there in the first five centimeters of the stack. Okay, pay attention here. So we have a, a, a few cookies in the first five centimeters, and we have to find out how many cookies are there. And you're told that the total number of cookies inside the stack are 300. That's a really big stack. Anyways, analogously, look at this part here. This entire rod has a charge of Q, and we're asked to find how much there is inside a small slice of the rod, okay? So here, what would you do? We'd say 300 times 5 over 100. 100 is what? 100 is 1 meter in centimeters, right? 100 centimeters is 100 right there. So we have 300 cookies times the fraction of the length being considered. Of course, assuming that they're all uniformly distributed inside the stack. Okay, so what we get here is 5 over 100 is uh, 20 times, and here if you get the zeros going, 30 over 2 is 15 cookies. Right? So how did we find how much how many cookies are there in the first five centimeters or any length for that matter right is by multiplying the total number of cookies times the fraction of the length that it's being considered just to verify suppose you're t considering the entire length so it's going to be 100 centimeters over 100 centimeters times 300 right so these two are cancelled and 300 is your final answer correct so the same way if you can, you just pause my video right here before I give out the answer and figure it out, uh, figure it out yourself. It'll, it'll really be cool. So, dq is going to be equal to uh, q times what? dx prime over a. Is that understood? It's pretty simple, right? The fraction of the length being considered over the total length times the total charge. Now let's derive dv first, okay? And then we can integrate that. See, dv is what the effect, the potential at p due to this small slice right here, okay? So it's going to be what? Um, and I, I, assume, I assume that you know k equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, right? So dv equals... 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. I might not write 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught from next time. It's just a waste of time. So right here, we we need a Q. And here, we're going to have DQ. Let me just write DQ down here. Okay? And the distance. Over the distance, right? Now, listen. What is the distance here? What is the distance of this little slice here? from p right let's derive that first so this entire th rod is a and this uh and the slice is about x prime of lengths away from the reference axis right so this distance of the rod right here whatever's left is how much a minus x prime where we generally don't consider dx prime in comparison with the larger lengths because it's very small. So a minus x prime is this part. What about this part? It's just x, right? So plus x is the total distance, right? So this is your total distance for when you're considering dx prime. So for distance here, let's put x plus a minus x prime okay now it's we have to substitute the value of dq in this equation okay and and I'm, I'm gonna call this k now uh, let's take a different color so k times uh, substitute 
this value instead of d cubed. Okay, so k times q over a, and I put dx inside a parentheses over x plus a minus x prime, because I want to keep dx prime with x prime, you know, uh, and the others are just constants. So this is dv, right? And, and let me put p, because we're trying to get the potential at point p, right? Now, all we have to do to get vp is to integrate this, right? So let's integrate it. Let's integrate this. But we have to find the limits from where to where, right? Let's go back to the uh, diagram here. So here, what what is the variable here? k, q, and a are all constants. a again here is a constant, and x is also a constant because p is at a fixed distance of x from the end of the rod, right? So x prime is the only thing that's varying, right? And if we go back to the diagram, it's pretty simple. I took x prime wherever I, f I thought fit, right? You can put that anywhere you like, anywhere across the rod. Only thing you have to get right is the distance of that slice from there to this, right? So as I said, if we integrate, we're going to see the effect of all the slices put together, right? So I can start slicing the rod from zero, which this is zero, right? From zero to the last, la the last, uh, the end of the line, right? I mean, the end of the rod, which is a. So the integration for finding out the potential is going to go from 0 to a. So 0 to a. And these are all constants, so we can bring them out of the integration sign, which is a big relief. k times q over a dx prime over x plus a minus x prime. And this going from 0 to a. All right. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, you're familiar with basic um, integration formula. Uh, so here, this is pretty simple. A constant minus x prime over, I mean, dx prime over a constant minus x prime should give you the natural log of this, right? So it is equal to, so integration of dvp gives you voltage at, I mean, potential at p equals k times q over a. My q looks like a theta, but it's a q, all right? So I uh, hope you understood that. This is natural log of x plus a minus x prime. But this is minus the, uh, the uh, there's a minus in front of x prime, the variable here. So you will have a minus right here, OK? Let's put a bracket around that, too. And these, and let's not forget the limits, they go from 0 to A, okay? Now it's pretty simple, right? We just have to substitute the, the limits and we're good to go. Let's take another color. So K times Q over A and higher limit minus lower limit, right? So let's put A here. And uh, well, right, let me just write it down. L natural log of x plus a minus a higher limit minus oops so negative ln of and we substitute zero for x prime right so x plus a minus zero what do we get k q over a here a a cancel and here it's just x plus a but this is negative times negative is positive so you get ln of x plus a ln uh, ln is natural log okay x plus a minus natural log of x okay and this is kq over a ln of something minus ln of another thing is ln of that thing over that thing right x plus a over x. That's it. You have found out the potential at point P. And this was part A. 
and we'll come back for part B. Thanks for